During the darkest hours of World War II, a formidable opponent came for the German Luftwaffe, a fighter plane so fearsome that it haunted the dreams of Nazi aircraft pilots. This adversary was the Lockheed P-38, popularly known as the Lightning. With its distinctive twin booms and powerful engines, the Lightning was a sight to behold. But it wasn't just its beauty that made it a legend among other warcrafts. Its engines provided enough power and maneuverability, making it able to outrun and outclimb the German Luftwaffe. From the deserts of North Africa to the skies over Europe, the P-38 Lightning terrorized the Luftwaffe. Its pilots were skilled and fearless, and they quickly gained a reputation for their daring and effectiveness. This is the story of the Lockheed P-38 and its daring exploits on the field of battle. After the Wall Street crash of 1929, the United States fell into the greatest recession the citizens had ever experienced. The aftermath affected the neighboring countries depending on the US for survival. Japan was severely affected as the country mostly depended on foreign trade. In order to get ahead of this and ensure their survival, they formed nationalist groups. The country focused on colonizing its neighbors in order to relieve its economic troubles. As Japan expanded its territory, it began a rivalry with the United States over clashing economic and commercial interests in the Asian region. As the tension brewed in Japan and Germany, the United States knew it was only a matter of time before an outright confrontation erupted. They had to prepare for anything. At the time, the Japanese Air Force boasted a fleet of sophisticated mono-wing fighters, which aided their aggressive expansion on the Asian continent. America, on the other hand, owned a fleet of outdated biplanes which wouldn't stand a chance against the Japanese Air Force. They needed an upgrade. And so, in February 1937, the United States Air Corps issued a proposal order calling for design ideas for advanced interceptor aircraft. They needed advanced model aircraft that could go head-to-head -head with the German and Japanese fleet and even surpass them. The specifications were clear. They wanted an aircraft that could go as fast as 400 miles per hour while being able to operate at altitudes of 20,000 feet or more. This was 100 miles faster than any aircraft in existence at the time. They also wanted it to be armed with 20 mm cannons while being able to perform air maneuvers, unlike any other aircraft. This was a tall order, even people in the US Air Corps were doubtful that any such design could exist. Six contractors submitted designs, but the only one considered was a blueprint from Clarence Kelly Johnson, a senior designer for Lockheed. Unlike the other contractors, Kelly recognized that the specifications requested couldn't fit into a single-engine aircraft, and so he turned his attention to the twin-engine. Even after solving the twin-engine problem, there were still a lot of configurations to be covered. Kelly had to ditch his initial designs. He used twin booms to accommodate the engines with the pilot in the center of the craft. The machine guns were fixed to the nose of the plane with superchargers at the back. The design was unconventional and downright radical. But at that point, radical was exactly what the United States military needed. Johnson's design impressed the executives, and Lockheed won the contract for an experimental prototype. In June 1937, the prototype designated XP-38 went into production. The production team faced a lot of problems at the beginning due to the complexity of the futuristic design. But even with all the challenges, they were able to complete the prototype by December of 1938. During the test run, the aircraft flew for 35 minutes and surpassed all expectations. The test run was a huge success, but they weren't finished. The US Army Air Corps decided to go after the Howard Hughes transcontinental speed record. Lieutenant Benjamin Kelsey was ordered to fly the aircraft from California to New York as fast as possible. They got to the New York airfield 25 minutes earlier than Howard Hughes's. The only downside was that the Marchfield airspace in New York couldn't clear off the runway on time for the XP-38's landing. It had to circle the airspace a few times, and in this process it ran out of fuel, crashing into a golf course. The XP-38 was destroyed in the crash, but it had proved its worth. As Germany consolidated power in Europe, it was clear that they'd be looking to expand territories soon, 
especially as they were allied with the Japanese. The United States Army ordered 66 Lockheed P-38s, marking the aircraft's debut in the Second World War. By 1939, Britain and France, seeing its performance in combat, also ordered 667 P-38s. But this time, the planes were to be built without superchargers. Lockheed engineers protested this decision as they expected that it would have dire consequences to the aircraft's performance. The RAF ignored the engineers' warnings to their own detriment. Soon after production started on the remodeled P 38, they realized that it was far inferior to the original model. Without the supercharger, the P 38 became slower than usual. It couldn't maneuver or climb like it used to. Due to this development, the Royal Air Force cancelled the rest of their orders. But that wasn't the end of the P-38's problems. Compressibility caused the controls to lock up in a high-speed dive. Most of the time, the pilots had to bail out of the aircraft. Another problem was with the twin engines. If one of them encountered a problem during takeoff or in flight, there was a high tendency for it to flip over and crash. Even the speed which was supposed to be one of its best features was a problem for pilots. They've all flown aircraft with speeds of 200 miles per hour. But the P-38 had twice that speed with strong engines, which left little room for any decision-making in the event of a malfunction. Following these complaints, the plane's Allison engines underwent a structural redesign. The modifications made the place more stable during flight. However, to win back the trust of the Air Corps, Lockheed had to send in its chief test pilot to fly the plane in different emergency conditions. By December 7, 1941, Japan landed a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, gaining the upper hand on the Pacific. America decided to send its aircraft to war. It sent the P-38 to Britain and the older P-39 to the Pacific. The P-38s encountered a few difficulties in Europe. It had to fly at 15,000 feet, which was far lower than what it had been designed for. This caused some maneuverability issues for the pilots, but its devastating firepower made up for all its other shortcomings. Because of its performance in low-altitude combat, the Royal Air Force had to look for high-altitude roles for the P-38. They modified a hundred Lightning aircraft for photo reconnaissance missions. The weaponry was taken out and replaced with cameras. This proved dangerous for the pilots flying it. They had no means of defense over the Germans, and so the new reconnaissance aircraft had a low return rate of 30%. Back at the Pacific, the P-39s were having problems bringing down the Japanese Mitsubishi A6M0, and so the US Air Corps brought in a new fleet of P-38s to combat the Mitsubishi fighters. Even with the overwhelming number of Japanese aircraft, the P-38 Lightning was able to hold their own. The tide was starting to turn, but that was only the beginning for the P-38 Lightning. One of its greatest victories in the World War II was at hand. In April 1943, after a string of losses against the US forces, the Japanese were starting to get demotivated. To improve morale, Admiral Yamamoto, the brains behind the Pearl Harbor attack, scheduled a visit to frontline bases. The US codebreakers were able to intercept and decode this message. With this information, they were able to plan their next attack they sent 16 P-38s to intercept the Japanese aircrafts and they successfully shot down the Admiral's plane along with his protection detail. With this victory, the US Air Corps started to push back against the Japanese forces. They arranged bomber aircrafts to take out Japanese airfields. The only aircraft with the range and firepower to escort the bomber aircrafts was the P-38. For the most part of August 1943, these pilots took out the Japanese forces in great numbers. The pilots of the 475th Fighter Group destroyed over 50 enemy aircrafts, taking a loss of only three Lightning. The bombing campaign gave the US forces the upper hand. They were able to invade enemy positions without fear of aerial attacks. The Japanese forces had to retreat, giving up the territory they had worked hard to seize. The Lockheed P-38 had also gained a considerable amount of popularity among the British forces. In the early months of 1943, the Allies led squadrons on a ground mission against the German forces in Tunisia. It took months with neither sides giving ground. 
Then the Royal Air Force brought in the Lockheed P-38 aircrafts, which turned the tides of the battle. By April 1943, the German troops started to retreat from North Africa, but not before the Allies took over 260 German and Italian troops as prisoners of war. Some of these German soldiers had surrendered after seeing the destructive firepower, the P-38. They dubbed the aircraft der Gablerschwanz Teufel, which meant the fork-tailed devil. After the Allies' victory in Tunisia, they moved on to the next mission, which was to choke off the German supply lines. The British Navy had already cut off access to the German troops in North Africa by barricading the Mediterranean Sea. The only other option to reach their army was through the air. To meet their troops' supply needs, the German army sent in a fleet of 500 transport planes, but the Royal Air Force was one step ahead. They sent in 19 battle-tested P-38s to intercept the German transport. The Lightning aircraft would use their superior climbability to get to altitudes above the transport fleet. When they spot the Germans, they would dive down and attack, picking off the transport planes and their escorts one by one. The Germans didn't even know what hit them. In just one month, the Allies were able to shoot down over 400 escort and transport planes while losing only 30. With this strategy, the Allies were able to stop them from delivering much-needed supplies to their ground troops, thereby further weakening their troops. After their victory in Tunisia and the entirety of North Africa, the Allies set their sights on Sicily, which was supposed to be the stepping stone to their invasion of Italy. Their objective for this invasion, dubbed Operation Husky, was to gain air and land superiority over the Mediterranean, which would make it easier to move supplies across the sea. The P-38 was enlisted for this mission. Some were used to escort the Allied bombers, which targeted enemy airfields, shipping and other strategic points on the island. The P-38 also provided aerial support for the troops on the ground. They attacked enemy positions, vehicles and troops. Another portion of the P-38 served as reconnaissance. They gathered information about enemy positions and defences and relayed it to the Allies' base of operations. The mission began with a massive amphibious landing on the southern coast of Sicily. As expected, they faced resistance from the German and Italian troops, but they quickly advanced inland. The mission was a success and the Allies took over Sicily, forcing the Germans to retreat even deeper. The Italian government also surrendered and joined the Allies, further weakening the German coalition. The P-38 contributed heavily to Allies' success in Sicily. Its long range and high altitude made it the perfect aircraft for the Allied forces in the Mediterranean theater. It was also very effective in escorting Allied bomber aircraft deep into enemy territory, providing cover and protection against enemy fire. The P-38 didn't advance into the German territory during the final days of the war, but its impact helped the Allied troops get that far. A total of over 10,000 P-38s were manufactured during the war, and they flew over 130,000 missions. They shot down more Japanese aircraft than any other fighter and reconnaissance aircraft and secured more than 90% of the aerial film used in the war. The Lockheed P-38 was called many names. The Lightning, the Fork-Tailed Devil, but there's one name that sums up its impact on the war, the Nazi's biggest nightmare. Its twin booms, powerful engines and devastating firepower made it a force to be reckoned with. From the skies above the Pacific to the Mediterranean, the P-38 played a pivotal role in securing Allied victories. Its legacy lives on as a testament to American engineering and the courage of the pilots who flew it.